Do you choose whom to love? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. When Jimmy Carter was President of the United States, he once had some misunderstanding with his wife. Punctuality was almost an obsession with Carter because of his naval training. Rosalind, his wife, was punctual, though not up to his exacting standards. All too frequently, a deviation of five minutes or even less in their departure time would lead to an exchange of bitter words. For 38 years, it had been the most persistent cause of dissension between them. On 18th August 1984, Carter went into his study early in the morning to work on a speech and tuned on the radio for the news. When he heard what the date was, he realized it was Rosalind's birthday and he had not bought her a gift. Now he had no time to buy the gift. All of a sudden, he thought of doing something special without a gift. He hurriedly wrote a note that was long overdue. Happy birthday! As proof of my love, I will never again make an unpleasant comment about your tardiness. He signed it and delivered it in an envelope with a kiss. It is reported that till this day, he has been keeping his promise and it turned out to be one of the nicest birthday presents in their married life. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus in the Last Supper speaks about love as the central focus of his ministry, but he emphasizes not love for God, but love for one another. For love for others can only be certain when God is acting in and through us. We can only say that our love for God is genuine if we possess sacrificial love, the ability to love those who are difficult to love, those who hurt us, those who are incapable of loving us. Jesus is the model for this sacrificial love. He exhibited this by dying on the cross for us. There is a story of two friends in World War I who were inseparable. They had enlisted together, trained together, were shipped overseas together, and fought side by side in the trenches. During an attack, one of the men was critically wounded in a field filled with barbed wire obstacles, and he was unable to crawl back to his foxhole. The entire area was under a withering enemy crossfire and it was suicidal to try to reach him. Yet his friend decided to try. Before he could get out of his own trench, the sergeant yanked him back inside and ordered him not to go. It's too late, you can't do him any good and you'll only get yourself killed. A few minutes later, the officer turned his back and instantly the man was gone after his friend. A few minutes later, he staggered back, mortally wounded, with his friend, now dead, in his arms. The sergeant was both angry and deeply moved. What a waste, he blurted out. He's dead and you're dying. It just wasn't worth it. With almost his last breath, the dying man replied, Oh yes, it was, Sarge. When I got to him, the only thing he said was, I knew you'd come, Jim. One of the true marks of a friend is that he is there when there is every reason for him not to be, when to be there is sacrificially costly. The greatest manifestation of our love for others is to sacrifice our own life for our friends. This may mean dying for others, but it may also mean living for others. This paradox is best exemplified by a mother or father who, in their earnestness to give a better life for their children, travel to a foreign land to die to themselves so that they may give life to their family. When we give sacrificial love, we are able to love God more. Jesus tells us today that we have been chosen to live a life of love. This is God's desire and God's commandment. We can choose to obey or we can ignore, take for granted or decline this invitation. We do not give God a favor by following His commandment of love but by answering his call punctually, that is, not wait till we breathe our last breath, for we never know when that will happen, and do this wholeheartedly, we gain the opportunity to bear fruit. We can then experience the peace and the joy that results from loving unconditionally. We can then attain the holiness that makes us deserving of God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Thank you for choosing me to bear fruit. Fill me with your grace so that I may love others as you love me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.